Good evening and welcome to another edition of AwakenTheWorld.ca. My name is Garen and this evening we're going to be talking about choice and the fact that the choice is always ours. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is going to seem kind of funny. Freedom of choice is not a right. And the reason it's not a right is it is a very fact of our existence. There is no possible way to remove it from uh, who we are. In this relative universe, every thought, every word, every action, every deed is a result of choice. And those choices occur either consciously or unconsciously. Now, I, I know right away there's a whole bunch of people who are thinking in their heads, well, what, what about a, a person who is wrongly imprisoned against their will? Or uh, the other example I use in the uh, post on the blog is uh, a 16-year-old child soldier, again, uh, taken against their will. Uh, and, and those voices do have a valid point. And of course, they're actually speaking to what happens when we try to limit choice, when we try to limit freedom. And it always ends up resulting in dysfunction of some sort. Uh, more importantly, perhaps, those voices are also speaking about the fact that our choices, again, consciously or unconsciously, can lead to harm to other people. Now, when it comes to unconscious choices, it, it, most of our choices in the world today are clearly unconscious. I mean, we simply have to look around to see the results of our choices to date. I mean, 40,000 children die of starvation every day. We have war, environmental destruction, uh, disease, famine, pestilence. The, the list it seems endless. And, you know, I want to be clear that it's okay. It, it's really okay. But once we, we become aware of it, once we understand that we're responsible, it's our choices. We, we can't put this on anyone else. Our choices at an individual level, our choices at a group, at a, at a community, at a city, at a province, at a state, at a world level. The collective of those choices has formed what we have today. When our choices can be made from a conscious point of view, okay, uh, what happens is our choices can start to get in line with universal harmony, with natural law. Our choices can uh, be become more focused on serving the whole and thereby serving ourselves by understanding that the choice to harm our planet, whether consciously or unconsciously, ends up causing us extreme harm. There are three criteria that we can use to look at if we're making conscious choices to determine whether our choices are in alignment or not with universal law. And, and the first is, of course, is that the choice is made consciously. That we're aware that independent of what anyone says, or tries to force us into, we are ultimately making a choice. Now, I want to clear something up here, and I'm, I'm going to use an example. Uh, my wife's brother-in-law, is that what it is? Wife's brother-in-law? Uh, you know, in the situation, on the ongoing situation with my wife and her a uh, conservative Christian family who have essentially outed her and haven't spoken to her for the last three years. You know, he's he's get, got in contact with her and, you know, his opinion is that he holds a neutral position. And the funny thing about choice is there's no such thing as a neutral position. By making a choice... Even not making a choice, you're still making a choice. Silence is a choice. Speaking out is a choice. 
Silence can be a more profound statement, a more profound choice than speaking out at times. But don't ever kid yourself that there's a neutral place to be. There is no such place. It simply doesn't exist. We choose one way or another, and it is absolutely impossible for us to lay the responsibility of our choices at anyone else's feet but our own. We are ultimately responsible. Now, in the example of the person put in jail, you're right. They maybe didn't have a choice to be put in jail. But it could be that the choices they made prior to that have landed them in jail. It could also, ultimately, they still have the choice whether to let the fact that they're in jail actually be an impact on their existence or not. Again, you have the choice. N note the use of the word responsibility because we really want to get out of the blame game. We can't blame anyone for what we choose to do. You know, it's a convenient ruse that ego likes to play and we're, we're willing to buy into it quite readily to, to have that uh, box of cookies or uh, that uh, go out for beer with the buddies, or uh, whatever the case may be. And we end up rationalizing that we're making that choice because of someone else's behavior. And I'm guilty of doing it at times too, but uh, it's, it's very rare. Most times I intentionally will say, you know, I have chosen this, and and... I'm, I'm upset with myself, and I'm upset with you. <laughs> you know, uh, my personal choice is, is to forget everyone's name. And the reason I do that is to make sure that every time I run into you again, there's no label, there's no prejudgment. You're fresh and new, just as you really are right now. And your name doesn't tell me anything about you anyways. It, it really doesn't. So, so that's one of my choices. Another one of my choices is that I, I hold nothing inside me. Whatever I'm feeling at the time, I simply express and let go with no attachment. That's taken a while for my <laughs> wife until she finally made the choice to understand the value of that. There, there's, there's no baggage that builds up during the day. There's, there's nothing that uh, weighs me down by the time n uh, night comes and I crawl into bed. And, and that's a beautiful thing. Y you know, when we talk about choice, of course, we're talking about freedom of choice. And freedom is, is something that doesn't exist in the physical world as much as we would like to think it does. But our freedom of choice exists. And don't kid yourself, those consequences for our choices can be quite severe and we're going to be called upon at least once in our lives to make a choice that we know is going to, to cause us pain in some way. But we also know that it's the only choice we can make because it's the right choice. It's the higher choice. It's the better choice. Now, again, I want to be crystal clear. There is no one to blame for the choices. And, and this isn't just an opinion. This is the truth of things. And I, I want you to understand why that is. If you're unconscious and you're making your choices out of a very limited viewpoint, you are not responsible Sorry, you are not to blame for those choices, but you are still responsible for them. Responsibility is empowerment. Responsibility is the ability to accept what's, what's been done, to not uh, beat yourself up over it and garner negative emotion and, and, and negative energy onto yourself and negative vibration, okay? 
but, but to instead take responsibility and that responsibility can be empowering there's a jewel hidden in that responsibility understanding that choice is always yours is also all of your power that's the gift that the responsibility of choice brings you know one of the things and and one of these days my wife is gonna whack me in the head with a baseball bat <laughs> on this video screen <laughs> because I'm always using her as an example <laughs> but like I said I've got a couple years of videos to do <laughs> she's she's cracking up on the couch She's actually digging for a, I think it's a, a knife maybe or an ice pick. <laughs> this may be our last video. <laughs> so, uh, but, but the point is this. My wife has a long history of looking outside of herself for validation. Uh, and she still tries to do that from time to time. And I always call her on it. I always say to her, no, d don't look at what I think about it before forming your own opinion about what you think about it. Just, just stop thinking and allow your heart to tell you. See the way you feel about it all for yourself. And, and then we'll talk. And sometimes I'll throw out a single sentence that I intentionally am using to see if she will make the choice for herself or be swayed by what I say. And very often she'll be swayed by what I say. <laughs> so th th these are lessons. And, and this is the beauty of a relationship. I mean, my wife and I are together by choice, not by uh, need. I mean, to be honest, there's a tiny bit of need on her end still, but, but th I'm working on making sure that's all gone. So she has no need for me at all. And a lot of people think, wow, that, that, what kind of relationship is that where you don't need each other? It's the perfect relationship. Because there's nothing that I feel that she can ever give me that will make me any more whole and complete than I already am. Therefore, I love her honestly and openly. Therefore, there's nothing she can do that could have any effect on who and what I am. And that makes for a very laid back and relaxed and peaceful relationship. And the opportunity for a lot of growth. It's been great. Me, I'm learning more patience. <laughs> and my wife is growing in conscious awareness day by day. <laughs> as, as I am too. <laughs> So uh, we're going to finish up with choice. Uh, at the end of the day, choice is both our responsibility and our power. When we understand that we have the power to choose, and again, you're never to blame, but you are responsible. You know, the, the results of our choices are... It's, again, back to that dichotomy again, that wonderful dichotomy of the, of the relative universe, okay, this physical realm. Our choices are our responsibility. The reason we're not to blame for them is because we're not, we, we don't control the, the end result. I mean, ultimately, that's creation itself, the sea of consciousness that's doing that. I mean, at the end of the day, if we keep pushing on the side of a wall, sooner or later it's going to fall over. That's kind of natural law. And that's the difference between making conscious choices and unconscious choices. Those same conscious choices and unconscious choices apply to uh, the state that our bodies are in, the state of our health. Now, if you have a debilitating disease, don't make the mistake to think that you chose that. But... At a, at a higher level, there's something there that this can teach you, something profound. And I'm always there to talk about those sort of things if anyone needs to. Much love to you. And again, as I always like to do, a reminder of what a powerful, beautiful, spiritual being you are.
uh, a shard of the Creator itself. I hope you have a wonderful night. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon, and namaste.